here for the second part of my presentation. And today, uh, uh, well, c'est le pointeur qui marche. Okay, so as I promised today, I will try to show you some relations of uh, germ grain SNR coverage model to, to the family of uh, Poisson Dirichlet processes. So we were quite excited when we discovered these relations with, with Paul Killer, and uh, I hope you will find them interesting as well. So let's start with something apparently not related at the first glance with what we've been talking about yesterday. So consider a sequence of numbers, can be deterministic sequence for the time being, okay, Pn, n from 1 to infinity. It's a sequence of like parentheses like that says that the order counts, okay? And then we want this sequence to add up to 1, okay, and Pn being in between 0 and 1. In other words, Pn is a distribution of real numbers, but we'll not be really using this fact. Or maybe. And then starting from a, such a given sequence can be deterministic for the time being. Consider it it's sized bias permutation. So sized bias permutation is a random permutation in which you permute elements of Pn in the following way. So in order to know what is the first element in this uh, permutation, you just draw one one element from this family, Pn, with a probability which is proportional to the value of Pn. So in other words, the, the, f the, the, the new first element, which is called P1 tilde, it's equal to Pk, kth element of this original family, with probability Pk. Okay, now when you do this, we will continue with something with this sized bias or permutation which is biased by the value of Pn, but without replacement, because you want to have a, 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 permuta a, a permutation. So in other words, uh, the second element would be chosen Pj, j different from P1, with probability Pj proportional to what remains in the sequence, okay? And so on and so forth. So given you have sampled all of the n minus 1 values, you sample, you take the nth value with prob being equal to pj with probability proportional to the value of pj to the remaining, what still remains uh, in the in this sequence. Okay, so I hope it's, it's clear. And we say that the initial sequence pn is invariant with respect to such a sized bias permutation, sized bias permutation. If it's distribution, so distribution of this new sequence, P tilde n is the same as the distribution of the original one. So at this stage, Pn better be a, a random sequence. Otherwise, except from some, some degenerate case, you, 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 you couldn't have this. Okay? And also look that um, it's quite easy to see when you take an arbitrary Pn and you first you do first size bias permutation. This sequence is already invariant with respect to the size bias permutation. So in other words, if you do for the second time such a random size bias permutation, you are not going to change the dis distribution. Okay, so this to say that a property of Pn being invariant with respect to size bias permutation, it says that the sequence, the stochastic now sequence, is a kind of equilibrium, okay, with respect to some, some dynamics which correspond somehow to this size bias something. Okay, and it, it, it happens that such, such equilibria appear naturally in, uh, in models, in genetic, genetic population models. Uh, you consider populations which evolve under mutations and random sampling and the steady state of such a population it should be described by a vector, random vector, whose distribution is ES VP, invariant with respect to size bias permutation. I'm not going to go into details regarding these models, I'm not an expert either. <laughs> it's not really 
related to what we had yesterday. So why I'm telling this to you today? Uh, or maybe before that, uh, oh, the first question we can ask, how we can characterize distribution which, are, which, are, which have this property, this ESBP property? Well, if you do not restrict your model, it is really general, because as I said, you take any distribution, any PN, then you do once ESB uh, size bias permutation, and already you have a, an, an example of a, of a distribution which is invariant with respect to size bias permutation. So it's too large. You're not going to get interesting results if you do not restrict the model regarding the construction of PN. And it happens that uh, there is one interesting restriction, again, which appears in population models. And it is the following one, the following one which is called stick breaking rule or model or um, residual allocation model as well. So imagine you have a, a stick of length one, if you, and you have a sequence of numbers u1, u2, and between 0 and 1. And then from the stick of length one, you take initially a part of length u1. Now from the remaining part, which is 1 minus u1, you take u2. So u2 describes you the, the fraction of the remaining part you should take, having extracted already the first part, okay? And now, and so on and so forth. Having already cut it n minus 1 pieces, you take the nth piece of this stick of length 1, initially of length 1, proportional to un, when un is, is the next value of u1. Okay, so again, Without any assumptions on you, stochastic assumptions on you, or use, that's not really a restrictive model. You can always represent something like that. Uh, I mean, any, any sequence Pn which adapts to one, and it's easy to see that if you add some Pn's, it's going to, to, to you are going to have one. And important restriction comes from the fact that we are going to assume that these values u1, u2 are independent. Independent, not not necessarily identically distributed. Here. Okay. The question is, under such a restriction, when P n now this of this particular form with this u u's being independent, when it is ESVP, when its distribution has this magic property of having distribution invariant with respect to size bias permutation. There is a f first answer given by McCloskey in 65, and uh, the answer is given to the case when you assume UN being independent as well as identically distributed. Okay? The answer is, uh, the result is that PN is ESBP if and only if these UNs are beta distributed. W beta 1 Theta and theta is some parameter larger than, than zero. If you if you do not remember, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, here is density of the beta distribution. Just just a reminder. Okay, so well we have seen something like beta distributions yesterday. So that might be a first ring that bells. Uh, there might be some relations, but we don't see them yet. In order to see relations, you have to wait. Okay, uh, sorry, I should say now that. Uh, now, PNs obtained in, under this assumption from the stick breaking rule, the sequence of PNs is called, or rather its distribution is called Poisson Dirichlet distribution with parameter zero theta. It's still not clear why I have the zero here. Uh, basically, it's one parameter family for the time being. Okay, so beta, it rings already good, but uh, not, not apparent relations to what we had yesterday. In order to see a first the first signs of <laughs> possible relations, you have to wait until 75. Okay? Uh, Kingman proved that there's a different construction of a Poisson Dirichlet process. Oh, sorry, d distribution or PNs having this distribution. How do you do this? You start from a Poisson point process on a half line, like yesterday, zero excluded. You take it with non homogeneous, with this intensity theta t to, t to the minus 1, e to the minus t, with theta bigger than 0. And you normalize the values, the points of this Poisson process. It, it's easy to see that all the points of Poisson process with this intensity, if you add up them, you obtain something finite. So you're, you're allowed to normalize y's by their sum, which is finite. And you call this 
a new process. Okay, it's like this Poisson, particular Poisson process normalized to have sum of points equal to one. Then this collection of values of vi, of course, if I'm talking about point process, I don't really care about numbering of points, so I don't really know which is the first one, which is the second one. But if you permute them according to size bias permutation, then seen in this particular order, they have the same distribution as distribution of use from the stick break, obtained from the stick breaking rule uh, with, with these betas. In other words, if you take this normalized Poisson point process, you order these points according to the size bias permutation, then you obtain the Vn, uh, no, v, Vi tilde, and uh, now it's ordered, and it has the same distribution as this P0 theta obtained in a different way and the stick breaking model. Right, because we see already a SINR, okay? Uh, somebody who is doing a uh, lot of SINRs, you know, when, when you see something like that, oh yes, great, I have a SINR. Well, not really INR, because I don't see any noise here. Not a problem yet. But not really SINR, because I have these J, sum over all J's, and recently, I, and yesterday we were talking about this interference, you don't count for, for, for Y in the, in the denominator. That's not also a problem, because yesterday we said, okay, we will be able to consider STIR, and that, that this, this object carries the, the whole information. There's more fundamental problem. The intensity of this Poisson process is not a good one. Okay? We didn't have really this one. We had yesterday we had t minus one. That's fine. So close to the zero, it's it's okay. But the tail was t to the minus alpha, or actually two over beta, sorry, and not exponential. So it's not really the same. First, you might say, okay, perhaps it would be good good approximation. It tends not no. Uh, this this process will have quite different properties. I I, I will show you. You might say, okay, maybe it corresponds to a, this propagation process to a, some particular network in which density of transmitters has some particular shape or attenuation function, some particular, or fading is, has some particular distribution, maybe. But not, that's not the case we, co we, co we considered yesterday. But wait a minute. I'm sure I have seen <laughs> some physicists calling Poisson Dirichlet process constructed exactly in the same way, but with the right, quote, intensity of the point process. The right meaning the same we had yesterday. So what was the problem? Is this a Poisson Dirichlet point process or the one physicist called the Poisson Dirichlet? It tends that everybody is right. Uh, you have to extend uh, the assumptions. And here is the, here is the extension. If you relax the assumption on UNs being necessarily being identically distributed. So I keep the independence of UNs, but I relax the assumption that they have the same distribution. And I ask the same question when my PN now sequences ISVP. It is, if and only if, now provided you exclude some degenerate cases when from some value on these are all the zeros or something like that. If and only if UN are again beta, but not uh, same distribution, of course and these values are parameters of these successive UNs are, are given here. And now you are allowed to take two parameters, not really freely, but a lot of freedom anyway, because you take, you take alpha from zero to one and theta bigger than minus alpha. The result proved by Pitman in 96. How it is related to our SIR process? Okay, so, the, so this, the, the, the distribution of PNs obtained from this model, uh, this, this is called Poisson Dirichlet two parameter Poisson Dirichlet distribution with these alpha and theta two parameters. And the relation uh, was proved, was found this bridge, I mean, analogous Poisson construction, uh, not really in this generality, was found by Pitman and Yuan, uh, proved in, in 97. So now you start exactly as before, you start with the Poisson point plus intensity zero infinity with the right, quote, density, the same that we had yesterday, uh, t minus one minus alpha. Remember, alpha was 
was is data is delta from Martin's talk, which is two over beta. It tends to two over past loss exponent being more important parameter than past loss exponent itself. Okay, and you do the same thing. You normalize Poisson points, these Poisson points by, by their sum, which will be uh, finite, and then will you obtain a point process. And if you order these points in a random manner, uh, performing this size bias permutation, then you get the ends that you can the the eyes which have uh, the same distribution as Poisson Dirichlet obtained from the stick baking rule. And such a Poisson, such a such a point process, uh, these are from processes on zero one, uh, they are called Poisson Dirichlet alpha zero. Okay, so I have two two models. One is one is zero theta. One is alpha zero. Uh, where is alpha theta? Uh, where is the construction for alpha, alpha, alpha theta? It's slightly more involved. Uh, not very tricky, but kind of double stochastic. Or you have to consider the double stochastic point pro Poisson process or, or or subordinators. We don't really need it for this talk. Let me point you the difference between these two models. They belong to the same family, but they are somehow on two extremities of, of, of this family. If you look for this process zero, zero theta, so it's not our process, quote, okay, <laughs> then the sum of this Poisson point, the sum of the, like, like in our terms it's just in interference, total interference. Total inter let me use this ter engineering ter terminology. Total interference in this model has gamma distribution, okay, but quite striking, this Interference is independent of the STIRs. So when you get normalized your points by the sum, so you, when you see only normalized points, VI, there's no stochastic way to infer any information regarding the sum of points. Information about interference is completely lost when you have only access to STIRs. It's quite the opposite for our Poisson Dirichlet process, uh, our, the other one, because, well, the interference has different distribution, but that's not surprising. What is really surprising is that now the, this total interference is a deterministic function of the SI, STIRs. In other words, give me normalized values and I'll be able to recover exactly the normalizing constant. Quite surprising. Indeed, uh, this total interference is equal to L to the power 1 minus alpha, 1 minus 1 over alpha, where L is the following limit, which exists P almost surely limit constructed limit of N. So you take, you order these STIRs, the strongest one, the second strongest, and so on and so forth. You take them to power alpha and you multiply by N, let N go to infinity. So in other words, you have to go to I mean, the limit is based on the, the weaker and weaker values of SI, STIRs, and this limit exists, call it L, and it is, I mean, up to the, some power which gives you the, 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 the interference. There, there's a nice argument, that's, very, that's a very elegant proof of, of, this, of this result. Uh, actually, it's called, it's, 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 it's uh, uh, attributed to Kingman, it's called Kingman's argument. It's it based on the fact that if you start from this initial Poisson point process of this intensity, if you take a deterministic function of this process, meaning you take these values to the power one, one minus alpha, you make it homogeneous on zero infinity. Okay, and homogeneous Poisson point process is known to have differences between successive points to be exponential, IID exponential with uh, parameter, it happens to be this parameter, and then if you, you just, just you use law of large numbers, you can basically law of large numbers, and this, uh, this homogenization, you, uh, you, you, you immediately see that, that this, this value ha has this limit. Okay, you will read this proof if you like, uh, when the presentation will be available on, online. Okay. The, the, the reason for which I, I, I showed you this, uh, this result is also that this gives you a, another way to approach the missing part of this family, the whole family inside between two extremal points. If you want to sample from a Poisson-Dirichlet process with two parameters, non-zero, alpha, theta, 
Uh, but you can sample from uh, this, the, 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 the recent one, the one with that has the same Poisson uh, assumption as, 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 as an R model, but you do you do important some. I mean, you do you you, you change you, you change the measure using this uh, ladon nikodym derivative or likelihood ratio, which is again the power of this L, which this 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 thing that we have just defined to the power alpha over theta. So that, that's a way to sample from Poisson Dirichlet of two parameters which are non-zero when you know how to construct Poisson Dirichlet of alpha zero. Okay, we have already seen some relations to SINR. Let's try to explore them a little bit more in, in depth. So, yesterday we were talking about SINR or STIR coverage probabilities. Let's be a little bit more specific. Let's call these values of successive S i n r is if noise is non zero by z, z i okay so z i is just y i which is the the signal received from the i station divided by w plus all other signals so signals received from other stations and remember from yesterday these y i's have a former Poisson point process of the same intensity that we had in the second Poisson derivative process okay it's t to the minus one minus alpha alpha being 2 over beta. There is some constant in front which is which is irre irre irrelevant because anyway we normalize, so it doesn't doesn't matter. You can have any constant here. The answer will be the same at, as, at least if noise is 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 is, is, is zero. Okay, so this is almost the same construction that we had for PD Poisson Dirichlet alpha zero, except for these two differences that we have W which is missing here in this normalization, or actually we have a deficit in normalization, and then we sum over j's different than i, and they, they, they sum over all j's. Let's put aside first the problem of the w non-existing here. Let's, let's see what to do with this j, all j's, and not only different than i. That's not a problem. Yesterday we already had, a, had an approach to, 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 to to, to, to remove this problem, you go from, instead of considering S i and r, you consider S total interference noise ratio, okay, uh, where actually the interference is the sum of, of, over all j's, and there is this deterministic relation, so you can go forth and back between these two processes, uh, deterministic mapping one to the other, so everything you know about psi prime immediately translates to psi and other way around. So from now on, uh, uh, we will n no longer be interested in S i n r, rather S t i n r, and then it has at least the same uh, way of treating interference as in this Poisson Dirichlet process. Consequently, at least if w, and not at least, exactly when w is equal to zero, the S t i r, no noise, process is Poisson Dirichlet of parameter zero alpha being two over beta. So what? Ah, you have access, immediately you gain access to very many distributional properties of this poisson dirichlet process that uh, have been discovered and proved by uh, Pittman and your uh, there's a very, very, very rich paper. Uh, we'll be citing it uh, several times uh, on successive uh, slides. What are examples of such results? I'm, I'm not very specific, just try to show you that they can be really useful for, for the community uh, which is considering uh, engineering properties of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, uh, um, of wireless communications. The first consequences, I mean, the, the, uh, the first example could be, could be this one. So denote by Z1, Z2, the successive values of this STIR process, this strongest, the second strongest, so and so on, and so on. Okay, and you, even if W is positive, consider the ratio between successive values of this STIRs, STINRs even. Okay, so the strongest SINR, sorry, the second strongest divided by the strongest, the third divided by the second, and so on and so forth. These ratios have very explicit distribution. It is beta of these parameters. Moreover, they are independent. 
has anybody seen this property in, in wireless context? Um, I, I've not seen it published anywhere. No. Because it, it W doesn't count in normalization. You can normalize whatever you want, it, it disappears. Okay. Well, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to, to convince you that all these results are really useful. I'm just trying to share with you my excitement about these possible relations, and then I let you judge whether they are useful or not. Another, another, another observation taken from, uh, grabbed from, from this paper by Pittman and Johan. Consider a ratio like that. Look, like cra look crazy, but uh, let's look a little bit at them. So again, noise can be positive uh, because I'm considering norma normalization. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm considering ratios of normalized things, so it doesn't matter how do I normalize them. What is this? It's an inverse. I take the i plus one received power divided by first up to ith power. So the ith plus one strongest station power received from it divided by, I mean, the inverse divided by the sums of the powers from the first of the ith. And something different, now I take the power from the ith and I divide the inverse of this divided by powers of farther stations, okay? That is a better way to present this thing. And here it is. Better consider the inverse of psi i. Okay, the inverse of psi i, so I look at the inverse of this, it's the power of the ith station, ith strongest station, divided by the power of the ith plus one, plus i plus two, and so on and so forth. So Martin immediately recognizes here his, his, uh, his problem of SINR and the context when you have successive interference current cancellation. You are going to connect to the I stronger station and you are allowed to remove from the interference all stronger stations. It's the exactly inverse of this. Now, of course, when W is equal to zero, otherwise you don't have this interpretation. The other one, I mean this with A, has can have the following interpretation. If you take one plus I J minus one, I minus I <laughs> A i minus one divided by xi i. I mean, you can convince your officer that it's nothing but the sum of the signals received from the strongest, second strongest, up to the i, divided by the sum of what remains. So uh, you can you can think of it as, as a situation when you have a signal combination. You, the the i strongest stations cooperate jointly code, uh, and you receive the information through these I stations, and they are in competition against the interference created by only by weaker stations, okay? And this one. If that's algebra, what do we know about distributions of these Xi's and I's? Again, uh, this is grabbed from Pitman and Yoda, that's some special functions, these are Laplace transforms, in other words, and the result is as follows. We know distribution of these A's and these Xi's at least in terms of the Laplace transform, a i minus one is the sum of i minus one independent copies of one random variable having this distribution, having this Laplace transform. Xi i is the sum of i independent copies of Xi one having this Laplace transform. Moreover, a i minus one and Xi i, which is exactly what appears here, a i minus one Xi i, they're independent. So when you have the whole information, complete information regarding size and i's even jointly as you should have i minus one xi i. So in principle you have everything to consider the signal interference cancellation and signal combination to have distribution. Of course it's not very explicit form because Laplace transforms, but it's an alternative approach to consider um, signal cancellation interference, uh, signal combination interference cancellation. Another one, I think we, uh, no, not the last but one. This time with W equal to zero. I mean, uh, this interpretation for interference cancellation and signal combination was also valid on, the interpretation was valid on the for W equal to zero. Consider the inverse of the kth strongest STIR, no noise. It is explicit Laplace transform, it's given here. The proof comes from this, and uh, we had also made an attempt to, to characterize the, the Laplace, sorry, the, yes, the Laplace transform of Z 
I mean, signal to interference ratio, not total interference, but they are related, and we had quite quite different expressions. So, quite often, uh, you will you will be you ha you have you have alternative approaches, sometimes expressions. Theoretically, you know they should represent the same thing, the same distribution, but it's usually it's not really easy, uh, and even sometimes almost impossible to see that they are exactly the same, okay? So you have a kind of often long probabilistic proof that two quantities are the same because they have the same, uh, the same characteristics of the uh, stochastic model which is described uh, uh, in terms of these Poisson processes. Uh, in, in, other, in other words, this, this, this distribution of the K, inverse of the K-strongest uh, STIR, it gives you alternative way to approach the K-coverage probability because, I mean, the inverse of something being smaller than something is the same as the, I mean, this thing bigger than T, and then uh, total interference bigger than T, it's interference bigger than T1 minus T, this we see, have seen yesterday, and uh, so basically the probability, this probabil probability that this is below 1 over t, it's k coverage probability at the value tau equal to 1 over 1 minus t, there should be, there should be, there should be in parentheses. Okay, again, a, a, a different approach. A, 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 um, we, are, we are free to choose this one or presented yesterday. And the last one. Uh, maybe merely theoretic, but, but maybe not. Uh, look, uh, it's, it's related to this fact that in this particular poisson dirichlet process, you can recover the information about interference from the, the ratio. So normalization does not remove the information re uh, regarding the, the normalizing constant. You have STINR process. Again, W positive is allowed. You, there is a way to recover the information, exact information regarding the ratio between noise and interference, having access only to STINRs, or total interference or not, doesn't matter because uh, uh, everything carries the same information, as well as the sum of these two values, no, W divided by I and sum W plus I. Again, uh, this is a pass. This is this L, L which is which is uh, which is given, which I have defined before. This limit that exists, we know it exists. So, in other words, when you measure on the inter signal to interference at noise ratio ra ratios, at least theoretically, uh, of course, re relying on small values of, of these of these things, you can estimate noise and interference separately because you can solve this and you get information about W and W plus I. And that's uh, what I have prepared regarding the relations between S uh, Poisson Dirichlet process S and SINR, so the, the, the case of the coverage without noise. Now, a more tricky thing is uh, how to introduce W to this model. So, how to introduce, quote, noise to the Poisson Dirichlet process, this normalization which is. Which is uh, which is complete, and and we have W have de deficit in this normalization. Well, to do this, you have to go to factorial moment measures. It's only at this level that you will be able to make this bridge, because you remember from yesterday I was talking about some factorization regarding the no noise of of these moments. So, so yesterday we were talking about the the factorial moments of some random variable, which was the coverage number. So, how, how many cells? cover a given point, and n's factorial moment of this was denoted by this, and b, it's, it's given by this expression, sum over all n different couples, uh, tuples of stations and indicator, all of them co cover zero on average. Let's extend this definition to the, what uh, will become a factorial moment measure now of the SINR process. So for T1, Tn, some values, non-negative values, let M prime, because it's total interference, so these primes account for total interference and not uh, interference. Okay, let it be expected number of N tuples, as here, of points, such that 
all of them cover the given point, cover zero, but each of them at different level. So the first one at T1 level, the second one at T2 level, the ends at Tn level. Okay, this is quite related to K modeling of KTN networks, uh, but I'm not go going to go in, in, into details regarding this. I just want to uh, convince you that this is a this defines uh, this is a, a factorial moment measure of this SINR process. Consider on the cone, okay, on on the value of this measure on the part of the of the n-dimensional space which in which all points are bigger than respect to the t1, t2, tn. Okay, on, on two dimensions it's such an orthant, it's n-dimensional orthant. So it's a way of considering factorial moment measure. When you have these value, values of n, mn on such orthants, you have information about uh, these moment measures now, which was not the case when we were, we were considering only only th this factorial moments of the random variable. Okay. Very much as yesterday, exactly the same as yesterday, you will have explicit expression for this, this value. It, it's, it resembles very much what we had yesterday. We have the same special functions which encode dependence on the noise and the same family of functions which encode dependence on the interference somehow. Okay? Uh, of course it is zero when uh, this con constraint is not respected because we know then this is this algebraic constraint for existence of n tuples covering respectively a given point. And these ti hats are, are this thing. So uh, I want to rema now recall what I said yesterday, I just uh, repeat it. So in this factorial moment measure, we recognize the contribution of the noise term only through this factor. So it's important, it factorizes in terms of the impact of the noise. Okay, this thing, it's a constant, okay, these are different constants regarding n, but they, this factor does not depend on t's. And this will be a bridge between poisson dirichlet process and STINR process with non-negative noise. To see this bridge, uh, may maybe, maybe I'll tell you. Uh, now, it's easy. If, if you have a, consider a case without noise, so W equal to zero, then this is a, some particular constant which corresponds to the case of value of this function when W is equal to zero. And the, the, same, the same quantity for point process without noise and this quantity for the case with noise, they, they differ, the ratio uh, is equal exactly this constant. Okay, so the ratio between, so in other words, this part and this part modulo some constant, it, this and that should correspond to the dense, the, 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 the same factorial moment measure of the Poisson Dirichlet process. And the value of Poisson Dirichlet pro factorial moment measure of Poisson Dirichlet process is much easier to calculate. You don't have these exponential things, these uh, well, all, all this machinery that we developed yesterday. It's it's very easy because of the link of this equivalent representation to the stick breaking rule. Here is the I just give a, uh, the idea, and uh, you you will see. It. And let's con let's consider only the, the f sorry. Only the first moment, okay? I'm now interested in the first moment, factorial moment, or moment doesn't matter for the first, of original Poisson Dirichlet process, no noise. I want to, to see what, what, what this measure is. So I say, okay, I want to know what's the integral of a arbitrary function against this measure. By the definition, definition of the factorial moment measure, or moment measure is just the sum of uh, expected sum of the value of this function taken over successive points of this Poisson Dirichlet process. It's this. But now you can divide and multiply by w, which I'm doing here, N nothing changes. And now it's enough to interpret this formula. The interpretation is as follows. In this expectation, you consider the first given values of vi's, so given these values of this process. Now, given values of this process, what you recognize in this sum, it's again distribution. Distribution of what? I'm taking vi with probability proportion to the value of vi. In other words, I'm doing, here I'm doing size by a sampling of the first 
element of the Poisson Dirichlet process organized according to the size bias permutation. Uh, size bias permutation. So, in other words, this is the same as expected value of f of the vi tilde divided by vi tilde, where vi tilde is the first element of the Poisson Dirichlet process, but organized according to the special size bias permutation. But this we know, we know the distribution of v1 tilde. It's beta, it's, it's from the stick breaking rule. So in other words, this, you can represent it as the integral uh, against the measure, which is basically the distribution of vi with the density 1 over t, 1 over t and the, dense and the, and the, and the distribution of, of the first, so it should be 1. Okay, so it's so v1 is mm, the, the, the first moment measure has a density against the beta distribution and density is one over t. Everything explicit. The same thing works now uh, by the induction. You well having sampled n minus one times, you sample n time. Uh, you do it. You, uh, you 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 will find your beta, which is independent with different parameter with dip dependent. You, you, what you had. Uh, before and the, the same argument with, with, this, with this with this size bias thing, but now considering n tuples of the eyes, you end up with such a formula. And in this thing, you recognize basically, I mean, product of beta densities with our respective parameters and uh, the analog of this one t uh, one over t that would be in n dimensions. Okay, and uh, I grabbed it from from this paper, but the idea is much older. Okay, so that's the link. Because now, if I want to have a density of my STI, the, the density of the factorial moment measure of my STINR process, by the definition, this density is the, this n order derivative of my function m. But that's a very horrible function. I mean, I, 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 will, I pretended that it's nice, but it. it <laughs> Try to calculate. Try to I mean, calculating numerically. It's okay, but de taking derivative of it, it's something different. N times. We tried with Paul. Uh, I don't know how much time, and we did not succeed. But then we realized that there's this bridge. I don't have actually to, to take a derivative of this. I know it must be equal to this very explicit formula obtained mm, quite easily up to the constant, which is actually the ratio between the model with noise and without noise. Done. Because if you have densities of factorial moment measures, in principle, theoretically, you have access to all quantities of the SINR process, so interference cancellation, uh, signal combination, and other fancy things, theoretically, in principle provided you can uh, calculate appropriate uh, sums. So this is, uh, this is just a brief reminder of a very general way of calculating quantity of, uh, in principle, arbitrary quantity of a characteristic of a point process when you have access to the factorial moment measures of this process. Okay, so this will be integrals, sums of integrals against some kernels. Kernels, these are these add one cost operators, a little bit related to um, Toc of Laurent. Uh, I mean, the same, uh, the same construction, uh, but not so involved uh, mathematics, perhaps. So in principle, you can, you can do this, uh, at least for some particular functionals, V. This is quite explicit anyway, and the nice thing is that in, our, in most cases, the sum will be finite, because we know that there is this algebraic property forbidding or preventing a number of cells covering a given point to go to infinity. So in principle, having factorial moment measures uh, or the densities, you can, uh, you can calculate other things, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to present more, more results. Uh, the, the last thing I would like to, to do is just to try to convince you that you can get numbers out of this thing, uh, these expressions. So um, no, no formulas, just uh, a few curves. K coverage probability, pass plus exponent equal to 3 and 5, and this is one coverage probability, two coverage probability, three coverage probability, or you can... I mean, this is supposed to say that formulas of yesterday, they are numerically tractable on that, take it like that. 
and to convince you that these factorial moment expansions are numerically tractable as well, and, and please take this as a, as a, as, as a not a proof, but a, an example. Now we consider the thing that I was talking about. You consider how much SINR improves a probability of SINR bigger than some threshold improves than when you are allowed to consider interference cancellation or signal combination. So well, I was talking uh, about that. You, you add up values of the k strongest stations and you consider the ratio of that divided by what remains. Or you remove k strongest thing and you consider k, k minus one strongest thing, you consider the, 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 the signal of the k strongest divided by the remaining thing. Then you, doing that, you I increase the coverage probability with respect to the usual coverage, I mean classical coverage thing, but by 10% or 20% when beta equal to 3 or respectively by almost 20 and 25 when attenuation is stronger. Conclusions. So uh, I hope I managed to convince you that uh, Poisson Dirichlet process is a as a model, one particular member of this class is, 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 is a model, a mathematical model, which shows you, kind of, it gives you access to the fractions of the spectrum considered as fractions of the, uh, uh, of the SINR. Okay, so these are like, well, um, you have seen. It's, 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 it's a way to see, uh, to see um, what is grabbed uh, by the strongest, the second strongest and th third strongest station in terms of the, of the ratio, of the proportion of the, of the, the total interference. This model is, uh, comes from a completely different uh, context. As, as I said, I think it appeared for the first time uh, in the considerations of some, of some genetic um, 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 population models in equilibrium, in equilibria. It's also used in math economic models when it represents, uh, not expert either, uh, but fractions of the market owned by different actors, different companies. And surprisingly, and that's how we actually found this particular Poisson Dirichlet process. We found it for the first time uh, in, in a physics, uh, in, 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 a, in a physical paper. Quite surprisingly, these va values, successive values of this, of this Poisson Dirichlet process, so our, uh, I, I, I dare to say, um, SIN, STIR process, it describes the, the energies, different values of the energy, of some, of some spin glass, uh, the very toy um, model of, uh, of spin glasses, which is called the um, uh, uh, Derrida Random Energy Model. So we have, like, you have some very simple um, Gibbs measure, but double stochastic, so you perturb it, and uh, you send the size of the system to infinity, and you consider the levels of the energy, so the, 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 the highest energy, level of this model, the second highest, and so on and so forth. Uh, very direct calculations shows that it is exactly this distribution that gives this asymptotic uh, uh, asymptotic um, um, regime of this, of this uh, asymptotic distribution of this regime, asymptotic in terms of the size of the system for the energy being uh, l low enough because the energy is and there's a, there's a phase transition if, ener if the temperature is big enough uh, then everything is uh, all energy levels are equally pro um, likely but if temperature is below some threshold then th there are some uh, there is some there is some uh, there'll be the 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 the, 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 the this, the, there'll be state with the, 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 high, the, lowest, the, 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 the lower energy than second lower and so on and so forth. And this is also a first step to, to consider um, uh, the, the model of the spin glasses, which is uh, Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, when again it, it plays important role and, uh, and even our, I mean, the, this invariance property that we had yesterday, it, it really plays some, some important role in this, in this, in this, in this literature. Uh, so, uh, having shown you these relations to, the, to this 
Poisson Dirichlet process. I, I hope I, I can attract some 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 interest in this uh, domain, which is uh, I mean uh, a lot of people study SI now. Maybe somebody will will, f will find interesting these these relations and maybe even useful to derive new properties of. Uh, of, uh, of these engineering models, or maybe other way around, because uh, in fact, uh, having introduced this W to, to the Poisson Dirichlet process, the original one, uh, it's a, actually a generalization of this, of this process, and uh, so maybe somebody in, in these different uh, uh, contexts will find this generalization useful as well. Thank you very much. with random coefficients uh, and uh, there is an extension of CAX result. CAX studies the zeros of uh, real zeros of uh, polynomials with random coefficients uh, with ages ago and there is an extension of that based on the for tropical polynomials and it's based also on the stick baking rule. Of the stick but there is this independence of, of use and there is the, the same Poisson Dirichlet appear, I mean a member of this family appear, appears. It, uh, Yes, we have okay. better connection. Okay, uh, great. So it's a, new, a, new, a new example on this list. No, I can also say that that one's book on, uh, say, uh, just is probably the main reference on uh, state breaking process. So it also contains a lot of references to other domains. And also it reminded me that actually uh, these gamma and beta uh, distributions, they appear uh, uh, as a um, so-called uh, shape, uh, shape size result. In so you have independence of uh, uh, so if y i independent of from the sum of i's, so then necessarily the sum is gamma distributed and uh, that, that's exactly the, the independence result. If it is, for instance, independent of the sum of squares, it necessarily a uh, normal distribution. So oh, okay. So there's uh, yeah, and uh, what's interesting that you also have a degenerate distribution in this case. Yes, but I was trying to avoid them. <laughs> Thank you very much.